Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Mr. Bermis. And hello, Stevie. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Oh, you know, fresh off uh, 30-some-odd hours on a train and two gigs back-to-back, but I'm once again ensconced in the Midwest, and I can do whatever I want to do. So, I'm happy now. I'm always amused that you find such trips fun. <laughs> Yes, listen, whenever people ask, sometimes when I post about them and I'm on the train, people are like, should I do this? And I go, it's not for everyone. Do you like to sit still for 12 hours? <laughs> then you can do it. Yes, Kate, my wife Katie was like, oh, that looks like fun. And I thought, no, it doesn't. Not for Full me. disclosure, Katie and I have been discussing, trying to convince you to, <laughs> to take one <laughs> Is that true? Trip. Behind my back. No, we, haven't, we haven't fully started our conspiracy but i'm i'm trying to get it going i mm. think you'd have a good time if if it was the right trip that's very true i think you might be right yeah anyway we're not here to talk about transatlantic train trips no we're here to talk about transgalactic adventure yes we're this is set phasers a highly illogical star trek podcast and we're talking about season three of star trek picard episode seven entitled dominion but uh, before we get into that, today's star date is star date 237-0403.2. And we have a little uh, housekeeping, a little business to take care of. Do you like nerds to hang out with? Do you like to watch Star <laughs> Trek with other people? Do you like to make food with nerds? I don't know what where I'm going what? with that. But I'm, you're, but you're monologuing like a supervillain now, right? <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> well, here on Set Phases, with our Patreon program, you need look no further. We have lots of things to entertain you with our behind-the-scenes access for our lovely podcast fans. You just need to go to patreon.com forward slash Set Phases for all your Star Trek needs. That's right. That's where you'll find us, and that's where you'll find... Adventure... But uh, without further ado, let's get, let's run it down. It's time to run it down. Can you run it down for me? Talk about the car down. Run it down, down for me. Wow, Star Trek Picard. I don't think I normally hear how much reverb is at the end of that that was it's truly heavenly <laughs> it's delightful i i really love the individual rundowns wow. that you've created well you've only created two but i love that one that's my favorite yeah. yeah 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 okay okay let's talk about this episode so this episode is called dominion i would say it's kind of an interesting like fast episode for like f there's not a lot that happens in it but much is revealed in the not happening of this episode. Uh, like, so much of the stuff, like, in other episodes of Picard, and even, like, the new Star Trek will be like, um, we gotta go to this place. How do we get there? Plot a course. But none of that happens. A lot of, like, quick stuff so we can get into the action. So, things begin. Uh, I've noticed that this season of Star Trek Picard, is this true of every season? Every episode starts with, like, a song, like a significant melody? Certainly all of the introductory episodes for each season do i have not noticed that yes of, right yes. Yeah, yeah but not necessarily but this, every episode yeah i feel like every episode starts with like sort of like a critical song or like a big drop anyway three blind mice unless it has another melody that's okay, what i, I thought was it was if, I, that's, which that's makes what sense I'm thinking. Anyway, when you get into the episode indeed see how they run um 
uh, being whistled. The the Enterprise is in the Chint- Chintaka scrap, not the Enterprise, the Titan is in the Chintaka scrap drive. That's where they're hiding. And it's Seven of Nine talking to Dun 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 Tuvok. Gray haired Tuvok, yes. which I feel like we've seen. Have we seen gray haired Tuvok before? Was there like a flash forward? Anyway, in he looks exactly like an old Tuvok would look. He does. <laughs> We he saw does. a flash forward of him as an old man, I think, during Voyager for some reason. I, and I, yes, and I think he looks he looks precisely as they predicted he would look <laughs> in thirty years. Yeah, because didn't he um, have? The, I feel like why did Janeway see him? I feel like Janeway saw him when he had like dementia or something. That was the two. It was we something saw. like that. He was he was suffering some, that like Vulcan disease where you lose your logic or whatever. Uh, maybe Q was involved. It's good. I can't remember what. Anyway. There, Seven's talking to uh, Tuvok, trying to figure out where Riker is, and Tuvok says he hasn't been taken into custody on the official logs, and it's 36 hours till Frontier Day, and uh, Seven talks about all the changelings, and they're trying to get Tuvok to prove himself, and they think that they have gotten him to prove himself, but then it is revealed that it is not Tuvok, but a changeling, because... Uh, Seven mentions uh, specifically about getting her neural uh, references uh, an episode of Voyager, which uh, if you if you I was like, yeah, of course, I don't remember her going to I forget what planet she says, Acleon Seven. I was like, what? That has, that's not unless it's some new stuff. Anyway, uh, Jordy has but, to but, disconnect but, but, the but, but, connection. Seven of nine yes. figured out that he was a changeling. Yes, yes, yes. Because she mentioned Acleon, which, of yes. course. A Vulcan would never go Correct. to, and but she and her neural. Sorry, yeah. go on. Oh, no, I was yourself. just going to say, but she did it so beautifully. I thought it was worthy of the Seven of Nine song. Oh, oh, play it. Yeah, yeah. Seven of Nine says, "You're not Tuvok. You're an imposter." No. Thank you. I just, we don't get enough opportunities to play that. So, you know, and the other thing is like, if you're not part of the Patreon, you don't get to see the sweet, sweet graphic that Stevie made for when that song is played. Mm. It's pretty awesome. Uh, uh, yes. So Jordy has to disconnect the signal because they're being tracked and, uh, they all look around the ship. Everyone who's a critical is there and they realize they can't do this anymore. Like they're trying to find help within the Federation and it's just the change of thing goes too far. Oh, also we find out that Tuvok may still be alive, the real Tuvok, but we don't know what has become of him. Meanwhile, Worf and Rafi are off looking for Will. They're not uh, on the ship for this episode. And uh, during a meeting, Beverly has this idea that they could possibly make a weapon or tool that could be damaging against just the changelings. But it veers into this area of biological warfare, which is how the Starfleet was able to get the upper hand, the leverage to be able to get to win the original Dominion War. And so... Beverly is kind of like torn as to whether or not she should do that. Um, and then Jordy kind of, and Jordy and Picard are trying to figure out, oh, oh, I just, I thought I heard something. Like, oh, okay. Jordy and Picard are trying to figure out what they want to use Picard's remains for and why they so desperately want Jack. And the thought, the, the, car, the current thought, which I don't really think is all that there is to it, is that they can use the remains and his son's blood to make a perfect replica of Picard to use during, um, uh, the the Frontier Day thing, whatever that turns out to be. Uh, they all go to question what I uh, am referring to as Uber Data. It's the Data who's like half lore and also has four, two other matrices that are Alton Sung and Before. And Jordy's explaining that like Sung and Before are memory only, but the personality uh, like profiles of Data and lore are fighting for dominance over. Uh, the body, and maybe alternate hope that the personalities would integrate, but it's not really working, so they're sort of fighting each other, and so Picard tries to ask Uber Data uh, why his body was stolen, and uh, is able to get some information while being sort of distressed by lore intermittently that 
there might be something about this aromatic syndrome that's being called into question, that perhaps that is not precisely what he has, and if that means that might not be precisely what Jack has, and we'll come to Jack later. Uh, and anyway, Data is asking for help trying to control his body, and so Jordy has to shut him down, and they can't delete lore, and it's very complicated, and they don't know what to do with Data. Meanwhile, on the Shrike, 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 Shrike. Vatic is, uh, I wrote, Vatic talks to the hand again. So, once again, is in the, has cut her hand off in the little bowl and is talking to the weird hand. And it's saying that they have to find Picard and they have to break him and they need to find the boy. And she's like, well, I don't know if we're going to be able to do it in time. And he's like, you got to. And then threatens to, like, was was the hand, like, making her, like, unstable? Was that kind of the implication of what was happening there? Mm-hmm. It's like her, her changeling stuff starts to shiver when he's threatening her. You know more than I do regarding Hmm. changelings. Well, these these changelings are slightly different, um, which is explained in this episode, which is interesting. But I did notice that the way the hand slash the face, uh, as it is uh, (laughs) it is uh, designated in the closed captioning, it's the face, uh, sort of talks about the changelings as if it is not one of the changelings. So I'm wondering if the face is not part of the changeling order, but something, someone, something else that somehow has control over uh, Vatic. Meanwhile, back on the Titan, Jack is still hearing voices and he's trying to hit on uh, S- uh, Sydney uh, LaForge. Uh, but oh, here, this is a weird thing now. So he's like still seeing stuff and hearing voices and like the weird veiny weird walls but he's also able to hear Sidney LaForge's thoughts uh, when he tries to hit on her and uh, I don't know we don't really that his eyes are glowing red which no one seems to notice when it's happening Uh, but he's like hearing her thoughts and hearing outside voices Um, he goes to see Picard so that he can bring this up and at the same time they get the compromised uh, command code from Riker which reveals that he has been captured uh, and the Shrike has him. Uh, Jack wants to trade himself for Will, and Picard is against that and has, he thinks, a cunning plan. To reference Black Adder, the Shrike. So he says, we're going to get the upper hand this time. And then, boom, big jump cut. The Shrike warps in to the junkyard. The Titan looks like it's been jacked up. They hear a subspace like uh, relay that shows that the Titan and another Starfleet ship were locked in, in like battle and that they're both floating there. So Vatic goes over with a search party. They scan for life signs, see that people are spread out all over the ship. And just as they're thinking they're running like rats out alone comes Jack who says you're too late and everyone's dead. And Vatic says, that's fine. I'm here to take you to a better place. And Jack says, what place is that? And she says, it's better to show than to tell. And Jack says, you have to get me first. And it's all been an elaborate ruse. Jack and Sydney, for some reason, it's Jack and Sydney, which I didn't fully understand, except that they're a love interest or whatever we're shipping. So uh, they're running from the boarding party and intermittently putting the bridge crews, putting down like uh, force fields to trap everybody. So they eventually get all the people trapped, including Vatic. Uh, but things don't go exactly according to plan. So Sydney and Jack are trapped between two of the boarding party face mask changelings uh, and unable to get out. Uh, uh, Jordy is unable to transport them out. Why? Because it turns out Uba data slash data lore has become more infiltrated in the ship systems than we originally thought. And he manages to trap Jordy and, oh no, I didn't write Jordy's. What's Jordy's other daughter's name in the show? Not hit the one who's Sydney his real daughter. and Alandra. Alandra, yes. Um, yes, uh, they're trapped, and then Data shows himself, and he's he's locked himself in the room, and he's taking over the ship slowly. Meanwhile, Beverly and Picard go in and question Vatic, and they want to find out uh, what her deal is, why they want Jack. They don't really find out about Jack, although Vatic does insinuate that maybe they don't know everything about Jack's quote unquote physiology. And also, we get the backstory for Vatic and these new, this new splinter group of changelings. I didn't fully understand how this works, but apparently some scientist at Daystrom Station had 10 
changeling prisoners of war and ran experiments on them that sort of like torturous experiments in order to turn them into like changeling spies for the Federation? Is that the kind of the concept that they were kind of trying to explain? And this doctor uh, is the face that Vatic has taken. So they eventually were able to overcome this doctor, though they were tortured and chipped apart and all this stuff. Uh, and Vatic took on their face out of hatred and is able to share this new form that allows him to to not only mimic what people look like, but the internal sort of work at the organs and stuff and flesh. Uh, she's able to pass that gift on, although it apparently is very painful and leads to a shorter life among changelings uh, who, uh, for those of us who know Deep Space Nine, know the changelings are supposed to be extremely long lived because you can be regenerated in the Great Link. Uh, meanwhile, Lore is taking over all the systems and the Changeling is threatening uh, a lot of uh, Sydney uh, in the and the force fields are about to come down. And uh, it is implied that Jack is not though she's there to get Jack. It's not that she wants Jack. She's getting Jack for someone else. She says Jack is, quote, not for her. And also implies not for Beverly either. So, I don't know. It's a lot of mystery there. Um, the shield regulators fail. Jordy is trying to appeal to Lore, who seems to be completely in control of the android body. But while that's happening, the shields fail. And uh, the... I don't even know how to describe them. The, the non-face changeling people attack Jack and Sydney. Jack is able to take out his with his weird Manchurian candidate training. Sydney is not as capable of doing so but then jack hears her thoughts again and his eyes glow red and then he's she's asking a question in her mind what she should do and then he's telling her what to do to fight in her head and they're moving together like i don't know a puppet and a marionette or like they're mirroring each other and it's super weird but they're able to take out the other uh changeling and then Sydney is like kind of creeped out by Jack, but they have to run because Vatic, while the the regulators went down, was able to get away from Picard and Beverly and now shows up there and is chasing them down. They run away and uh, Jordy is finally able to appeal to Data within the positronic matrix and Data comes back and they're able to... Uh, sort of get things back in order, but not before Vatic and her squads relink up and head for the bridge. There is some critical information that Beverly and Picard got, which was that the when Vatic was being tortured, experimented on, it was part of a program called Project Proteus. And since they have the full logs from Daystrom Station, they know what Project uh Proteus is, they can look it up in their information and they find out that all of these new changelings have a radioactive element called Thelonium 847 inside of them, which should allow them to be tracked because it has such a very, very long half-life. I think it's a hundred year half-life or something like that. But meanwhile, Vatic and the changelings take the bridge. They beat the crap out of Captain Shaw, throw him on the bridge. He's bleeding and crying. Vatic takes over the ship, which was her real goal. And she says, now she's going to tell Jack who he truly is. And that is the end. It's the end of episode seven of season three of Star Trek Picard. Let's chat about that. I say, darling, let's do a quick chat about that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. let's go. Well, it's starting to go somewhere well, now, isn't it? It truly is. This, like I said, it wasn't like a crazy action-packed episode, but so much like lore. <laughs> <laughs> was revealed in this like we know where Vatic comes from and Project Proteus and what her what her upset is but there's more mysteries like who is this hand face person that seems to be in control of things and what the hell is going on with Jack and Sydney now mm. like so many what? questions because he, he likes her he's able to talk to her brain. or they like each other <laughs> they can talk to each other like maybe that's it or he can just pick somebody and he can control them but he doesn't have that relationship with Beverly, whom I assume he likes. But is, <laughs> has he ever tried, though? Interesting. Maybe he's like, his gifts are coming into yeah. fruition like now a, that he's 17. How old is he supposed to be? 20? 20, yeah. 22, whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, he's he's Superman, and he's, you know, his powers are gradual. 
Yeah, he doesn't seem to have a real understanding of what's going on, but his eyes are glowing and he hears voices and he's able to talk to Sydney and maybe they'll be a badass kind of fighty team together. But they, I really don't understand what's going on there. Um, I imagine choreographing that might have been quite fun. I'm sure it was a blast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the little, the little fights that did happen were very interesting and I love Picard and Beverly and Vatic coming face to face and kind of a war of wills. Uh, the unfazed Vatic as she's trapped there uh, and sort of monologuing about her history and this Project Proteus, which is something very new. Not not something ever mentioned in DS9, if you were wondering. So I don't think even in DS9, I remember that they, they did make a virus that affected the Changelings and had to use the cure to sue for peace. Uh, by then, the Changelings had teamed up with the Cardassians. It was a whole thing. But um, I don't remember there being like 10 prisoners of war and them being experimented on. I think that would have been... So I'm hearing that in Deep Space Nine, Section 31 created a virus to kill the Changelings. But in the episode yes. Extreme Measures, Bashir found the cure. And Vadik points out that Starfleet didn't deliver the cure to the Great Link themselves, but one of their own had to bring it to them. And I'm to your point, were there like 10, yeah. 9? Oh, yeah. She and nine she others. She said nine others. So ten yeah, of them yeah. that were kept by Section 31, which makes sense because then Section 31 gets to do secret mm -hmm. things. It's a curious thing. Well, the issue is, you know, like when we first meet the Changelings in Deep Space Nine, the character Odo was being experimented on by Cardassians. They didn't know what he was, and his name, in fact, means like little thing or something like that. They just had no idea what he was called, so they called him Odo. And they didn't know that he was a changeling from the de the Gamma Gamma Quadrant? Voyager's lost in the Delta Quadrant, right? So, yeah. The changelings are from the Gamma Quadrant through the wormhole. Anyway, there's some curious stuff here. I wonder if we're going to see René Aubergeois. Aubergeois. Well, I mean, a flashback, because he died. Oh, yes. He died. <laughs> wow, you just made me so sad. Sorry. I was like, uh, Aki. I forgot. I was like, man, I wonder if we're going to see Renee. I would have been so happy. Nope. Ugh. Dided. What a drag. So You're right. are, we think, are we saying that there are two types of changelings that we're seeing? One is Vadik, who's a different type of changeling to the one that's in her hand? I don't know what the fuck is going on with her hand. Okay. Uh, so Vadik is a type of very specific... She's a changeling that's been experimented. Changelings normally can look like something from the outside, but if you scan them, you'll see that they're made of, like, gold honey juice. Right. You can see. So yeah. are we still assuming that there are only nine of her type? No, because she said she's able to give her gift. She's, like, okay. able, she's like patient zero to Got others. It. So I think she's created a larger group of them. That's okay. Why this is where I'm, like, yeah. trying to keep up with. Because, you know, if you were not a Deep Space Nine fan... This is all yeah. brand new information, and it's a yes, slightly yes, yes. complicated plot. The original Changelings are not involved. The original Changelings went back to the Gamma Quadrant and stayed there. They're like, we will give up our desire for conquest. And Odo goes to join them and to like help them, you know, be peaceful. Which is the Great uh, Link slash the Great Lake of Honey Juice. That's okay. right. Big old, it's a planet that is literally just a bit like a couple of rocks and then a big lake of honey juice. It's hot. And then. Um, these are is like a splinter group that I guess no one knew about, and we don't know how they went from the lab to become to having the shrike and all that stuff. But I have a feeling that hand face has something to do with it. Whoever hand face is, and they don't. And hand face I don't think is a changeling. It's my guess, but somehow is able to speak, is able to like speak to them through their flesh. Ooh, crazy. I mean, I'm trying to think Jack for who. If Handface, Handface, if yeah, Handface hand is not a changeling, who yeah. could it be? This is a great question. This is tinfoil Did time, I? people. Okay, listen. It's, 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 it's probably not. It is not Lorca. Lorca. I mean, could be, but it's probably not. It doesn't look like Lorca when it's doing its handface. So let me just put that aside. Could be, but. Let's say it's not Lorca. The off chance it's not Lorca back from having been blown up inside a tiny star in the mirror universe. I don't know who it could be like a Cardassian or um, 
there's a couple species that were involved in the chainsaws. Could be someone who was involved in Daystrom. I just don't know what the agenda is. Like, we don't know why they're attacking Starfleet, why they want to bring Starfleet to the ground. We know why Vatic does, but we don't know why Handface does. Who is who Vatic is delivering Jack to. And all this, like, weird business about him sending to a better place and where he came from. That's kind of interesting. And who could control the changelings, the new, newly genetically modified changelings like that? Yeah, someone who can manipulate Thelonium 847. Also, I mean, yeah, there's so many questions there. And I'm uh, this is, they really know how to ramp it up because now I can't wait for episode eight. I just have to have these. I want to know where they're going. It has to be explained. I have to know. <laughs> okay. Shall we move Sorry. on? <laughs> well, one more thing is just that uh, hopefully Data can keep control over his body from lore. I don't, I don't know how they're going to resolve that. You know, like Jordy had to make an emotional appeal in order to get Jordy, uh, Data to be able to wrest control away from lore to control the body. So, so many things up in the air. I am hoping that there'll be a valiant rescue by Rafi and Worf in the next episode. <laughs> Since they're not on the... She's really conspicuous that they're like, they're not here. They must be going to rescue Riker and Troy. And Troy. And then they all show up wherever the ship is going because they know how to track the Titan. Maybe. We shall see. All right. It's just becoming the NBA and NBC song. Hello, once again, here we are at that Phaser's uh, nightly news. We go immediately to the Easter egg desk with Stevie Mad. Stevie, how are you today? Well, hi there, Aki. I am well, I am well. It is great to be here on the set of set Phaser's No, on the set of Star Trek Picard. <laughs> Uh, season three, episode seven, Dominion. This episode Dominion. opens. Dominion. Oh, that wasn't bad. <laughs> that wasn't that bad wasn't at bad. all. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this episode opens with the Titan hiding in the Chintoka strap scrapyard, which means mm-hmm. we're back in the Chintoka system, which first appeared in DS Nine. Uh, Featured in such episodes as Teamers of the Prophets, The Siege of mm-hmm. AR-558, which sounds like a, mm-hmm. an assault rifle. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, the Breen and the Dominion blew away Starfleet in this system in the changing face of evil, which is why there is such a massive scrapyard here yes. in Picard that the Titan is hiding within. Indeed. <clears throat> Tim Russ as Captain Tubelk, obviously. We love we love such a throwback. And just, just a little, little cameo from Tim Russ. Um, it was quite fun, and I loved the the grilling of Calto, uh, and mm-hmm. you know, obviously their their you know have, their relationship pulled out the fact that it was a changeling. But I hope Tuvok is all right. Maybe we'll see more As from Tuvok because he is being mm-hmm. kept. I assume we hope he hasn't. Mm-hmm. He can't have been murdered by the changelings. There would be no point in that. Um, no. Yes. Anyway, so, where are we? Um, Data remembers the scimitar. Is it the scimitar or the scimitar? So, the the scimitar, I mean, yeah. So, when he is reawakened, he wonders why he's not on that ship. And this was the name of Shinzon's warship in mm-hmm. Nemesis. And this is the version of Data's memories uh, which stops at this point in 2379, so about 22 years before this point. So, again, it's sort of a quite quite a fun little... Uh, date mm-hmm. reference mm-hmm. point. I loved um, the cards that years ago Data asked me to let him go and to die in peace. And I was like, years ago? But obviously this was referencing the end of Picard's season one. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Which I rewatched recently and I was like, that wasn't all that long ago. But it was. <laughs> was, like, I, only, <laughs> it was. I only watched it a few weeks ago. But no. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in Star Trek time, this was a couple of years ago. Um, let's see. And uh, yes, so Picard deactivated this program essentially the point of divergence between that data and this one is 2379 Mm. and the season one data was put into a quantum simulation now this copy of data's memory comes straight from b4 and thus has not experienced the passage of time at all indeed Indeed. um yes i think that's just where i'll stop with easter eggs because you know i yes i think that's where i'll stop anyway okay it is back to you in the studio Yes, very much. Uh, very uh, thank you much, much, much. I want to move on to quotable moments, but I also wanted to just forgot that they keep mentioning Admiral Janeway, and I keep thinking there might be a K 
cameo from Jane White. But anyway, moving on to quotable moments. Quotable moments. What did you have? I only have a few here. Uh, there were like a lot of monologues, but they weren't all super quotable. Um, obviously, I loved when F uh, Handface said, your physiology is not as special or complex as you believe, which is just a, I just thought it was a cool, badass thing. But that also clued us into perhaps he is not a changeling. Mm. And know? that there, there are I, weaknesses in the changeling physiology that might allow them to be too, beat. Yes, or control it. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Um, there's a. I don't know if I'm stealing. Did you? I mean, listen. I want to give you the the pick of the litter. So, I, you know, do you have one that you really love? No, I didn't. I think there were a couple okay. that you know happened between Picard and Beverly when they were sort of deciding what to do, but there weren't any mm -hmm. that sort of struck me as you know nice little barbs. You know, I love a a, a nice little barb. You love a barb. Well, we had some classic. Um, monologuing from lore when uh, uh, Alondra said uh, was it Alondra or Sydney? I think it was Alondra said his door always been this, the lore always been this arch and lore responds when you're constantly subjected to these self-righteous, self-proclaimed heroes spewing their morality as if vomit was somehow virtuous then sometimes dear a little bend, a little arch a little antagonizing flair is required I quite like that Indeed. And I, I would have used that for next time, but it's just too long. Um, and also, I like the lore when he says, it's human nature, pal. I'll put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's human nature, pal. Yeah. <laughs> um, those are my quotes. All right. Shall we move on to next time? Let's move on to next time. Woohoo. Woohoo. Who the fuck is it? There we go. Uh oh. Next time. Oh, wait. On set face. No, you're going to do that. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Yes. As I conduct the Next Generation theme, I'll say thank you very much for listening to this episode. If you've enjoyed it, we have dozens upon dozens of back episodes of other covering other episodes and s series as as of Star Trek. And so please check those out wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have a little time and you find yourself on Apple Podcasts, please do feel free to rate and leave a review. It helps people find us. Yes, and uh, don't forget you must join us with other nerds on patreon.com forward slash set phases for more behind the scenes fun and exclusive access to your favorite friends here, over here at set phases. Aki, stop Hold conducting. On, let me just we get these violins. Uh, yes, we also have, uh, you can find us on social media at set phasers podcast on the Instagram and on the Facebook meme game strong. It's all Stevie. Yes, indeed. Well, this has been set phases, a highly logical Star Trek podcast. I am Stevie Mans. And I am uh, TikTok goes the ancient clock. I didn't know how to fit that one in, but I really wanted to say it. And this has been Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Computer, end the program. Computer.